Tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern over on Jaguar Gator 8, a new college football video drops. Also at 9 p.m. Eastern, join me live on Twitch where we'll talk about anything and everything in our weekly Q&A stream. Link to join below. And now, on with our feature presentation. There are some absolutely intense divisional rivalries throughout the NFL, and I would be here all day if I listed every single one of them. From matchups like the Packers against the Bears in the NFC North, to the Steelers against the Ravens in the AFC North, to practically every team in the NFC East, there are tons of rivalries where teams are out for blood, and want nothing more than to stick it to an old nemesis. However, as much as these teams hate each other, as much as these fan bases hate each other, every good rivalry has a mutual respect attached to it. What I mean by that is that even though you can't stand the other team, you can't imagine not having them around. As much as the Bears hate the Packers, no one wants to see the Bears and Packers in separate divisions. Jerry Jones probably cannot stand the Eagles, but he's not going to be campaigning the league and advocating that the Eagles leave the NFC East. And as much as the Roonies hate the Ravens, they're not calling up the league office and begging the NFL to realign the divisions so that the Ravens are not a part of the AFC North anymore. But now, I want you to imagine having a rival that is so hated, not because you truly hate them, but because they flat out suck, they bring your division down, and because you feel no attachment to them whatsoever, and you campaign the league to get them out of your division. It's not even a love to hate them situation. It's just a pure hate, where an entire division that could not stand each other united for a common cause, with that cause being to attempt to boot a team out of their division for being dead weight. Well, in 1994, that's what the NFC Central was trying to do with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Because in 1994, the Packers, Bears, Vikings, and Lions were all united in an enemy of my enemy is my friend kind of situation to get the Bucks to shoe somewhere else. And this is the story behind the crazy attempted realignment, and perhaps the craziest story in the history of the NFC Central. Before I talk about the actual incident in question, and why the NFC Central wanted to boot the Bucks, we need some context to understand the landscape of the NFL, as well as why the NFL was set to change pretty drastically in the coming years. And to do this, before we hit up 1994, we have to flash back in time one year to 1993, when after over a decade and a half of teasing expansion to get to 30 teams, the NFL finally did it and announced two expansion teams that would be joining the NFL in 1995. This was the first time since 1976, when the Seattle Seahawks and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers joined the NFL, that the league was adding new teams into the fold. And in October 1993, the NFL announced that the Carolina Panthers would join as the 29th team, with an announcement in November one month later being made that the Jacksonville Jaguars would become team number 30. Obviously, when you have a new team, you have to slot them into a division. But before you slot them into a division, you have to slot them into a conference. And for the NFL, even though there was some discussion and debate about it, with merchandise at one point even indicating that Jacksonville would be in the NFC and Carolina would be in the AFC, they landed on the alignment that we know of today with conference affiliation. Jacksonville would play their games in the AFC and Carolina would play their games in the NFC. The main reason for this was because if you put the Jaguars in the NFC, then they share a very similar market with the Buccaneers, and with the two teams now sharing the same TV contract with Fox, that could create a whole host of issues, with no one's secondary market being happy. So with the six divisional options for the Panthers now being cut in half to three, which division would they be slotted into? Would it be the East, the Central, or the West? Well, the most logical choice as stupid as it sounds, because it made it seem like geography isn't even a consideration, was the NFC West. And the reason for that was because at the time, each conference had 14 teams, with two divisions having five teams, and one division having four teams. Therefore, it made the most sense to just slot the expansion team into the division with four teams, with that being the NFC West, consisting of the San Francisco 49ers, the Los Angeles Rams before they moved to St. Louis one year later, the Atlanta Falcons, and the New Orleans Saints. Yes, it is downright stupid to have a division with two teams in the Eastern Time Zone and two teams in California, 
but this was also the same league that had Division, where a team in Phoenix played in the East, so everything was out of whack. Now, there were quite a few unhappy people with the NFL's plan to slot the Panthers in the West, even though the Panthers, oddly enough, wanted to be in that division. Pittsburgh wanted a whole realignment, which did not happen. Atlanta Falcons president Taylor Smith expressed his frustration with the system and said, Let me put it this way. They put us in the NFC West more than 25 years ago. They said it was temporary. We've been there ever since. However, there was one set of teams that was the angriest of them all about the possibility of the Panthers playing in the West. And those were the teams that comprised 80% of the NFC Central, with these teams being the Green Bay Packers, the Chicago Bears, the Minnesota Vikings, and the Detroit Lions. Because they wanted the Carolina Panthers to join their division, and it had nothing to do with the notion that expansion teams traditionally stink early on, so they wanted the easy opponent. And it had nothing to do with the fact that Charlotte is closer to all the divisional teams than Tampa Bay, so it's easier on travel. It had to do with the fact that the other team in the NFC Central, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, absolutely sucked. Now on the surface, this seems counterintuitive, right? You're telling me you can get some free wins against an opponent every year, improving your record and improving your odds at making it to the postseason, and you want to kick them out? Imagine if, in baseball, the St. Louis Cardinals just said, Yeah, kick the Pittsburgh Pirates out of the NL Central, pretty please. We want to face tougher competition, and instead of having 18 games against an awful opponent each year, we want it to be against someone who's not as bad. I have to truly emphasize this. The Buccaneers were terrible, and every team in the NFC Central was counting their lucky stars every time they saw the Bucs on the schedule. The fact that they could play them twice in a year was incredible. Think of Derrick Henry and how great he looks playing the Jaguars twice a year. Now amplify that by a factor of 10, and you have Barry Sanders against the Buccaneers. Since 1985, excluding the strike games, the rest of the NFC Central played a very nice 69 games against the Buccaneers. In those 69 games, the NFC Central teams combined for a record of 48-21, winning a whopping 70% of the time. Every team was getting their licks in on the Bucks, And yet, despite the near free wins every year, the NFC Central teams were petitioning the NFL badly to kick the Bucks out. So there had to be another reason for this, because no team in the NFL is ever upset that they have cupcake opponents that they are beating. And as you might have been able to tell, just like everything in life, it comes back to the almighty dollar. Turns out, the Buccaneers weren't just bad, but they were so bad that they were actively costing the other four teams in the NFC Central money. And the reason for that comes down to a calculation used back then called visitor share. The ticket money at a game does not just go to the home team. It gets shared between the home team and the visiting team, and it gets shared with this formula. How it works is that you look at the gross receipts that a team makes in a game, and then you subtract the stadium rent and expenses. Whatever figure you're left with, you give 60% of it to the home team, and 40% of it to the visiting team. In other words, the more fans that show up to the games, the more tickets sold, and the more money that the home team gets from their stadium deal, the more money the visiting team gets. And in Tampa Bay, because they were so putrid and were so bad, and because they didn't have any close geographic rivals with the other teams in the NFC Central, meaning that visiting fans weren't coming to the games in mass numbers like you would see if the teams were within driving distance of each other, the visitor share in the NFC Central was abysmal. The Bucks had just 23,000 season ticket holders in 1994, which was by far the lowest total in the NFL. And it's not hard to see why, as this was a team that hadn't had a winning record since 1982, hadn't had a season without double-digit losses since 1982, had won just one playoff game ever, had an owner that was the worst in football, and from 1983 to 93, in that 11-year stretch before this, had a combined record of 45 and 130, winning just over 25% of their games over a decade. Every game got blacked out in 1993, and throughout the 1990s, they had multiple games with attendance numbers in the 20,000 or 30,000 range, which was almost unheard of. All this gives Tampa an abysmal visitor share that significantly lowers the division average. While the Bucks never released figures on their specific visitor share, 
We do know that the average visitor share across the division was $600,000. And in the NFC Central, which had the lowest average visitor share of all six divisions, that average was just $525,000, with all reports indicating that the Bucks were the reason for the low share. Later reports confirmed this. The average visitor share for the first three weeks of the 1994 season was just above $608,000. But when the New Orleans Saints came into town to take on the Bucks in week three in a 9-7 win by the Saints, the Bucks only paid out $436,000, nearly $200,000 below the league average. Their financial situation was absolutely dire. In other words, while you always want your divisional opponent to be bad, the Buccaneers were so bad that it was actively hurting the other four teams in the conference. It's almost like if you have a group of people that play pickup basketball together, and you hate each other during the game because of how competitive and aggressive it gets. And then, there's one guy that joins the group after a few weeks, and is the most anti-competitive person ever, not taking it seriously, not making any effort to create good spacing, and not getting back on defense. All of the original guys, as much as they dislike each other, now have a mission to get that guy out, and to get that guy to stop playing pickup games with them. Because even though their stats are better since it's easier to score whenever you had to play against him, he was so bad that it was a detriment. With that, the four other teams in the division wrote a letter to Commissioner Paul Tagliabue begging him to take the Bucks out of the NFC Central and put the Panthers and their expected $1.2 million in visitor share in there, because they just couldn't take it anymore. The four teams even said that they didn't want the rest of the divisions to change, and that there didn't need to be any giant realignment. They just wanted whatever it took to get Tampa out of there so they wouldn't have to deal with their ineptitude anymore. As Chuck Schmidt, the vice president for the Detroit Lions who helped spearhead the movement, said quite bluntly on the whole situation, clearly, we want Carolina replacing Tampa. I don't think that's selfish at all. One writer called the request from the rest of the teams in the Central the ultimate insult. And honestly, I can't disagree with that. Imagine being so bad that it's not fun anymore, and being so bad that everyone wants you out. The NFC Central teams were really pushing hard for a change in membership. However, as you can probably expect, the NFL did not accommodate the Central's request. Yeah, the Buccaneers stunk and were kind of a joke of an organization, but tough luck. You were just going to have to deal with it, because we weren't making any crazy realignments. We're just going to slot the two teams into the two divisions that need a fifth team, with the Jaguars going in the AFC Central and the Panthers going in the NFC West. End of discussion. We're not going to make things harder on ourselves when we don't have to. Plus, if we want to excite a new fan base and create a sense of history already, then giving them a close geographic rival like Atlanta that they can latch onto would do way more than it would for the Buccaneers. In other words, nothing was changing, and the NFC Central, despite the best efforts of the other teams, was going to remain intact with its current divisional lineup. And while the bad news was that this division stayed like this for the rest of the 1990s, the good news was that when the NFL expanded to 32 teams in 2002 and created divisions of four teams each, the NFC North did not consist of the Buccaneers. So the Bears, Lions, Vikings, and Packers all got their wish, even if it was a decade later. And I guess the irony in all this is that since this request was made, the Buccaneers have won as many Super Bowls by themselves as the other four teams in the NFC North combined. So be careful what you wish for, I guess. Still, I can't think of a greater insult than what happened with the Buccaneers in 1994. Not only are you so bad, but you're so bad that we don't want you around anymore, and we don't want to beat up on you anymore, even though it helps out our record and helps us out tremendously on our quest to make the postseason. A letter with the purpose of getting a team kicked out of a division for no other reason than they just stunk is quite the statement. But in the mid-90s, that's exactly what happened in the NFC Central. Because if the NFC Central was a pirate ship, the teams were hoping that the Buccaneers would walk the plank. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below.
If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JaguarGator9. To see college football videos, subscribe to JaguarGator8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.